Hi, this is Tyler with Aftertouch Audio. Let's break down everything you need to know to start making water magic like this. Before we get started, here is a quick list of everything we covered in the previous magic episodes. So if you missed any of this information, I would highly recommend checking out those videos first. Don't forget to like the video if you've enjoyed, and if you're liking the series so far, consider subscribing to be notified when the next video goes live. With all that out of the way, let's get started at the source. So what do you need to start making water magic? Well, I've compiled a large list of some of the samples that I tend to reach for when I'm designing my water magic. Underwater movements. Object submersions. Object immersions. Water sluices in different containers. Splashes with impacts. Splashes without impacts. Rivers flowing with differing intensities. Waterfalls. Crashing waves of different intensities. Water bubbling. Water drops. Swimming movements. Geothermals. Geysers. Cannonballs. Dripping and synthetic textures. If you would like to keep your microphones dry and skip the sampling process, I have left some of my all-time favorite water-related sample libraries in the description below. But let's quickly go over some tips for recording water. Now, water is usually one of the very first things sound designers record once they get access to some sort of recording equipment. Why? Well, because water is just everywhere. And it seems easy to record, right? I mean, just plop a microphone near the water, splash around a bit, and bam, water magic. While this type of gorilla recording does work, there are a few recording tips that you can adopt to get much better water recordings. Before we go any further, I gotta draw it up. Invest in some dirt. Then put that dirt into a bag, and bam, you got dirt bags. <laughs> but in all seriousness, sandbags have this wonderful ability that prevents your microphone from doing a swan dive into a deep, watery grave. Yeah. Place your microphones closer to the water. I know this is a very scary thing to do, but with your trusty new friend the sandbag, you can get your microphones much closer to the water with a plus 10 boost in your confidence skill. The further away your microphones are placed from the source, the less high-end energy is captured, and this high-end is so important when putting together finished water spells. Hydrophones are your best friend when capturing water samples. And when it comes to the price, they're not too bad, but they are 100% worth picking one up. Nothing beats having some solid underwater recordings to layer in with your spells. When sampling water whooshes, try experimenting by placing different objects in the water at different depths. The types of objects that you use to skim across the water will also drastically change the characteristic of the whoosh. Going deeper in the water will help give you a more fuller sounding whoosh with lots of low end. The beauty about water magic is that you don't really need a lot of complex processing if you have some good source material to start with. But there are always a few gems that just might surprise you. Applying vocoders and envelope followers to your water recordings is a great way to help shape and transform your water. You can get as crazy as you would like with a vocoder, but one of my favorite things to do with it is to create underwater samples. Now, stock vocoders are useful, but how far can we really take things? Personally, I heavily rely on a program called Envy, which is like a super vocoder. Envy is a master at stealing characteristics from one sound and imprinting them onto another sound. We can steal both spectral imprints and amplitude envelopes from things like whooshes, explosions, and other sounds, and we can take those and apply them to our water recordings. We can also control things like pitch and gain within the plugin, but let me quickly show you what sounds you can get with a vocoder and an envelope follower.
Yeah, vocoders are awesome. We usually use reverb as a spatial effect, but we can also use reverb as a washing texture tool to increase the length of our samples, create pads, or even help us with some underwater textures. I mean, just with these two effects alone, you can create some awesome underwater soundscapes. Take a guess what you think this sound is made out of. Yep, just a bathtub filling up. What really sells this effect is the filter modulation. Rocking the filters back and forth add a lot more movement than just having the filter stay stationary. Making all the fantasy water magic sounds is cool and all, but what can really help sell our magical effects is vocal efforts. Having your character make some sort of vocal gesture when performing the action is a fantastic layer to add to give you that high budget feel. A good collection of generic vocal efforts can really help you out as a sound designer, as most of the redesigns I've listened to don't have voices in them. If you have a few friends that are willing to lend their voices to you, I've made a list of some good generic vocal efforts to get for both male and female voices. Attacks. Celebrations. Build-ups. Animated efforts. Laughing. Magical phrases. Pain. If you are in need of more RPG elements to layer within your water spells, I highly recommend checking out the Magical Textures video, as layering in some of these elements can really help add some extra depth to your sound design. So let's talk synthesis. And by let's, I mean Averith. Hi, my name is Averith Taiga. Synthesizing water noises is actually a bit of a process, and I'll tell you how by showing you how to synthesize five different water-based sounds. And then I'll show you how to combine all of them to make a magical spell sound. First, we're going to synthesize some underwater sounds. A few things to note about water is it doesn't carry high frequencies very well, but it carries low frequencies for basically ever. What this means is if we're going to synthesize something that sounds like it's underwater, we have to low pass it and add a lot of reverb. For this example, I'm just going to use a simple pink noise burst. As you can see, the sound is very dull because of the low pass, but it carries for a very long time thanks to the reverb. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have steam. Steam is, effectively, just noise. Thankfully, synthesizers are really good at that. One fun thing you can do is use a low pass filter to sort of crossfade between an underwater sound and steam, like this. Using that same idea, we can actually use a resonant low pass filter to do a similar thing, but create a water drip sort of sound, like this. Another thing we can do is synthesize the sound of rain. Rain is effectively noise as well, but it's made up of a bunch of very tiny little splashes as well as whooshes. This is because each individual raindrop whooshes through the air, usually at a very high rate of speed, and then splashes on the ground. As such, to synthesize rain, we really only need two noise channels. One, a sort of duller sound, such as brown noise, and one, a sort of particle noise-like sound. In this case, I'm using plates as a particle noise generator. It is granulating white noise. And finally, if you want to synthesize a large splash sort of sound, you would actually use noise in a similar way as to if you were to synthesize a clap. A clap is essentially just a rapid series of decaying noise bursts. And we can use a lot of what we've already learned about in this section here to create the sound of a splash. Here we have the basic clap sound. Here we have the filter sort of going between underwater and steam, or in this case, it's less steam and more wash. And then we're also going to granulate that wash similar to the rain patch. And thus we have a basic splash. Now, how can we use all of this to synthesize the sound of a water spell? Pretty easy, honestly. You have three major parts of really any magical spell. You have the initial sound of you know the spell being created, a hold sound typically, and the sound of the spell actually hitting something. So in this case, we can use the water drip slash crossfade from underwater to steam noise as the buildup. We can also use the underwater hit noise as part of the impact, which we'll also use a splash with. And for the hold, we can effectively just use the rain patch. 
And there you go. Relatively simple. Obviously, you can expand upon this as you wish. The key, of course, is to just have fun with it. Back to you, After Touch. Thanks, Abirath. Check out her blog in the description below where she shows off how to make all kinds of sounds using nothing but synthesis. Okay, here's my session for the AoE water bomb. I started by organizing my session by creating separate groups and VCAs for the voice, cast, launch, hold, and BGs. Having separation like this really allows you to focus on one element at a time. Within these groups, I have both mono and stereo tracks for each layer aside from the voice. Looking at the casting sound, I didn't want to have a lot of liquidy sounds in here as it was going to overlap with the launch layer. I focused more on creating assets from the Magical Textures video like noise bursts and bells. Then I added in some lower sounds like underwater effects and bubbles. For the launch layer, I really focused on the water elements. I used a lot of different frequency ranges for whooshes, rivers, and bubbles. I also automated a stereo widener and applied some panning automation to help widen the sound when the spell expands away from the character. I still felt like there was something missing, so I added an extra synthetic riser to help communicate that the spell is building power. The impact layer is split into three sections. Two transient layers, one dry, one wet, and then the tail. A really cool trick I learned from Siren to create more punches in your mix is to fade in and delay samples that don't need transient information. So for my tail samples, I have them faded in and coming in directly after the transient finishes. Mixing plugins are cool and all, but you can really get a fantastic mix using nothing but timing, EQ, panning, and volume. For the voices, I just added in some generic female shouts, compressed them so it's a little more consistent, and then added some EQ. I also added a BG section because I just can't not have BGs in my sound design. For the processing and mixing, it's really basic. EQ on everything, just cutting out the low end of samples that don't need it and cutting out the high end of samples that don't need it. I also made some room on the cast and launch layers for the vocals. I used some instances of Enforcer where I needed some extra punch, and then I topped it off with a Forest Reverb preset from Altiverb. For the actual mixing, I like to mix each group individually until I get each individual layer sounding good on their own, and then I use the VCA faders to mix the entire spell together. And with that, here's the finished sound. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are liking the Magic series so far, please consider leaving a like on the video. These videos take so long to produce and I really do have a lot of fun making them for you guys. If you have any questions, please consider joining the Discord below as we do a lot of crazy things on there like having the members challenge me to a Connect 4 match. Time for blood. Now go make some noise. <laughs>